Jersey Channel Islands, idyllic for a holiday, but surprisingly teachers there are facing many of the same issues in terms of raising standards as those on mainland. New teacher, Patrick Lanuff, is perhaps more anxious than most about raising standards in maths. His colleagues at Champlain School are keen to share their methods of introducing new ideas in maths using visualisation. Do they have to say that that's a half cup or just that's a half? They can say both because if, if they're looking at what that, what that represents, it represents half but it is a half cup. Mm. So it's important that children can, can do both. So when you're talking about two and then you're going on to two cups, yeah. is that a good time to perhaps introduce the idea of the mass story being just figures and, and symbols and then the real story actually being manipulated with cups and objects? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly the point. Mm. It might be worth actually if uh, we demonstrated that with the cups with Patrick and, and did some on the board. Okay. Mm. So, Patrick, you'll need to move over here. Okay. Deputy Head and Maths Mentor Ian George is leading the session. Patrick is about to act out his first sum using paper cups. Okay, so let's start again. Okay. Actually, Lou, you do this one. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, two. Add. Three and a half. Take away one and a half equals, and then how much is that all together? Four cups. Well <laughs> That's very good. Anyone who comes new to the school have, have been entrenched in their own styles of teaching. They're coming to a new school and a new system, a new structure. So basically we prioritise that. A new member of staff gets quality time with Ian or someone else who's been working on the scheme already. We give them time, we work alongside them. One of the first things that, that, that children need to do is to recognise the numbers, to be able to write the numbers and to be able to write and read and respond to the signs. The, the first one was this one, which when children see it, they will say, add. But the phrase that they will use uh, in order to respond to it as an action, they'll say, get ready to get some more. If you see that sign, that means that you're getting ready to take away. And the other sign that we used uh, is this one, and this is quite important. Uh, this sign, children will say, uh, equals, but it means count the cups. I think also, Ian, it's really important that when they are actually physically counting the cups at the end, that they realise the final part of the math story is when they've seen that on the math table as the final answer. How much is there here? So, if I wrote this first of all... Right, and what are you doing? Um, I'm thinking about the invisible add sign and right. moving it across to the math table so that we've got something to start with. OK. Yeah. And it's important that you show everybody what you've got so that they can check uh, oh. and also they become an active part of what you're doing. So, what have you picked up? I picked up one whole cup and a quarter cup. So how would you say that number? One and a quarter. One and a quarter. Good. Right, what are you doing now? I'm getting ready to get some more. And how many are you going to get? I don't know yet, because you haven't written it. That's exactly <laughs> the answer, you don't know. And, and we want children to say, I don't know. Uh, and that's a very positive thing for children to say. Uh, and we'll do that. Three cups. Three cups. I would also make the point, perhaps, that, that if we're dealing with fractions as, uh, as part of a math story, that we also use the vocabulary of three whole cups. Mm -hmm. okay. So that they can see it as a whole. And that, again, might need some, uh, some emphasis with the children or some explanation with the children as to what we mean by a whole cup. So when they're doing their, that's a cup, that's a cup, they yeah. need to be doing, that's a whole cup. Yeah, because that's a cup, mm -hmm. but it's a half cup. Mm -hmm. OK, so that distinction definitely needs to be made. OK, so let's just recap on what you've done so far. Can you read it out for me? One whole cup and a quarter cup, okay. one and a quarter. Add three whole cups. Excellent. Getting ready to take away. Oh, you see, I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> and how many are you going to take away? Don't know yet. Excellent. Good. And could you do that? Two whole cups 
and a quarter cup. So how do you say the whole of that number? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Good. Right, and what are you doing there? Um, seeing how many there are and how many cups I have all together. Right, you're, you're actively counting them. Yeah. Right, you're counting them. What does that sign tell you about here? The mass draw is now coming to an end, so right, I'm going to work out how much there are all together so I know what to write down. So how much is there all together? Two cups. Two cups. Excellent. Could you, re could you read out what that says for me, please? What it says, not what it means. Right. One and a quarter, add three, take away two and a quarter, equals two. And what does it, what does it mean? It's one cup, or one whole cup and a quarter, add three whole cups, take away two cups and a quarter cup, equals two cups. Well, I would say really important to say whole cups in that yeah. because you're talking about one whole cup and a quarter cup, so it's really important, even if it's not just one cup, that you are still saying two whole cups and a quarter cup equals two whole cups if you're reading actually what it means. OK, so you're ready to get some more. I want you to get two. How many cups? Two cups. Now, I want you to do this. No. No? No. Right, that, 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 stop there. Because what have you, when you did, when you did that, when mm -hmm. you went to the, the resources table, what, what were you doing? I was getting ready to get some more. Right, but you're not getting ready to get some more. No. I love it so much. Yeah, but what do you love? The number two, or the two cups. Yeah, you don't love the number two, you love the two cups, and the two cups there. So, so when you make your action to that, to those cups, it has to be to the cups that are on the math table. Right. Okay. Okay. And then I just come straight across and get some more. Well, yeah. you don't. No, you can't no, no, straight away. I don't know how many times I'm going. To... Exactly. Not you don't know how many times. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, if you if if you do that sign to those cups. Right. So. Fantastic. <laughs> right. And I want you to do it that many times. Okay. Does that mean I have to go across another four times, or just three times because I've gone once already? It means you go another three times. You, you have to go four times altogether. So, the so second time. how many times have you gone now? Twice. Twice. How many more times have you got to go? Another two times. Another two times. Another two cups. Mm -hmm. Okay, and could you do that for me, please? And the answer is? Eight. Actually, I, I would do that again, and not just the counting, and, and actually... Identify how many are there all together. So we've got that, and then eight whole cups. Yeah. So how much have you got here? Eight whole cups. Right, and how much have you got here? I've got four gangs across with two cups. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> no, what you've got there is eight whole cups. Eight whole cups. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So what you've got there is eight cups. What you've got there is eight cups. Same value, different appearance. Same value, different appearance. Yeah. What we will also want to look at is how we can use these fractions. Uh, in an ostensive way again to, to represent other numbers to children. So, for example, if we'd written on the board of the children, had written uh, a half, add a half. So they'll have two halves. When they come to count on the, uh, uh, on the math table, what we found in the past is they, they can write one of two things. Uh, some children will write, uh, will write one. And some children, because they understand that that represents a half, one half, will actually write that, and they'll write it as two halves. What we encourage the children to do is to, uh, is to take the halves, or if they see a series of halves together, they'll glue it, and they'll stick the halves together, and they know that that then creates a whole cup. OK, so two halves, one whole cup, same value, different appearance. OK. Eventually, uh, with lots of practice, uh, that can transfer onto cards as well. So if they see a half and a half, they'll see that uh, as two halves going together and making a whole. Now, this can be extended when we have... Uh, we introduce quarters as well. When you have a mixture of fractions, the easiest aspect of it is where you have ones which are going to go together quite easily. So, first of all, they're going to look in this instance where you've got a half and two quarters. They'll look for the, for the, uh, for the fractions which go together or similar. So they'll look for, and encourage them to do it, to look for the quarter cups. And the quarter cups go together to make a half cup. Then you say to them, what have you got? You've got half a cup. Is there anything on the math table that that could go 
together with. It goes together with the other half cup because you've got now got a half cup. You've now got another half cup. You glue them together. What have you got? You've got a whole cup. But they have to start from a consistent point of gluing the cups together, looking at the, the signs, imagining the cups, seeing the signs, imagining cups, gluing them together, thinking that. Then in the abstract, they may still be thinking about cups or they may be thinking about signs, but they're going to, uh, they're going to formulate that themselves. They're bound to use the experiences they've had, but it needs constant, constant reinforcement. So what we're going to use is a combination of, uh, of whole cups and fraction cups uh, and we'll leave it with just the multiplication sign. Okay. Okay. So, that number is? One whole cup and a quarter. So one and a quarter, quarter cups. cups. That's so, a kiss, because I liked it so much. Excellent, right? And what does that number represent? Five walks from the table to the math table. Brilliant. So. Well, the way Patrick's laying it out is really important as well, because Sometimes the children just jumble it all together. Yeah. It's nice to because then you can backtrack and they can recount how many trips they've actually made. Yeah. Right, you finished? Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. no. Sorry, oh, no, you haven't told me. I sorry. haven't told you that. No, I'll okay. Sorry. So you've got five whole cups and then five quarters. Right. So before you do count it fully, can I ask you this question? If you were looking at the five whole cups, mm -hmm. would you allow the children to write down the number of whole cups first of all? Mm, I wouldn't, not yet. Right. This is something that children, uh, I found in experience, tend to do. They look at the whole cups uh, and they'll say, OK, well, I know there's five whole cups, so they'll write five, and then they think, right, I'll start thinking about the fraction cups and gluing them together. So, more glue and stick, 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 I stick. Admit, I usually say to them at that point, well, put, the, put that yeah. half to one side. Yeah. Yeah. Now have a look at else, what else you can see, and they'll find that they can make another, another half, another yeah. half so of the other. It's very hard to manipulate, <laughs> and then they right associate putting the two halves together yeah. to make a whole, so you're actually going through two different processes yeah. rather than just trying to make a whole with four quarters. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then they get, they hopefully make that distinction. Well, fine. do you help them make that distinction? Yeah. If they can? <laughs> yeah. And then, um, so I've got an, another whole cup, Eventually, yep. and a quarter. So, with that quarter, can you do anything with that quarter? No. No, and, and that's the question you ask the children, so that, that's left on its own. So now you're in a position to count the whole cups. Which would be six. But can I, can I just ask, would yeah. you, once you've made the, glued this together and got the half, would you actually encourage them to go and substitute it for no. a half or not? No. You if you get into, into substitution, uh, then that can confuse the issue. They may think that if they've got those four quarters, it's suddenly changed into something else when you move it over there. The scheme's still in its infancy, but in a neighbouring school there's hard evidence that the vast majority of children expected to get level one in maths achieve secure twos, not to mention attitude and understanding improvements noted by all teachers.